Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Mary's. It's good to have you here this morning. I'd like to welcome especially anyone who is here for the first time or anyone who is visiting us this morning. If you're here for the first time or if you're visiting, can you raise your hand so we can welcome you? Hi. Thanks for joining us. I'd also like to welcome everyone watching online this morning. We're glad you're joining us uh, from wherever you are. Go ahead and uh, let us know you're here by telling us where you're watching from in the live chat. We'd be happy to greet you there. We have a challenge here at St. Mary's. It's called the Five Week Challenge. That's where we ask anyone who's new to come for five Sundays in a row because five is the number of the Holy Spirit. So come for five Sundays in a row and be open to the Holy Spirit working in your life. Is there anyone here who's done the five-week challenge before? Can you raise your hand if you've done it, if you've come for five Sundays? Awesome. <laughs> okay. So there's a few of you, and you might be wondering, what next? After I come for five Sundays in a row, what am I supposed to do after that? And then what? Um, or maybe, uh, maybe you've, you've been here uh, long before we started doing the five-week challenge, and you're wondering, what's next for St. Mary's? Well, we have a special announcement. Starting next week, we will be um, revealing the parish game plan, is what we're calling it. Um, so starting on September uh, 4th, all the way until October 2nd, uh, we will be doing a five-week series based on our parish game plan, where the Lord is leading St. Mary's into the future. Um, so you don't want to miss it. If you haven't done the five-week challenge, what better five weeks to come for than uh, the game plan weeks, which start next Sunday? Uh, okay, so the Knights of Columbus are hosting a new series for men called Into the Breach. It's at 7 p.m. on the last Wednesday of every month, so you can come enjoy refreshments as well as discussions on the foundations of the Catholic faith and family life. Please see the flock note or the website, stmarysottawa.ca, for more information. Uh, RCIA, which, is, which stands for the Rite of Christian Initiation, uh, will begin, we'll begin classes on September 11th. This is for people um, who would like to become Catholic. Uh, if you know someone who wants to become Catholic, who wants to enter the church or learn more about the Catholic faith, the RCIA is the perfect place to begin. And you can reach out to RCIA at stmarysottawa.ca for more information and to register. And finally, it's with immense love and appreciation that St. Mary's bids uh, farewell to our youth minister, um, Caesar, along with his wife and family. Uh, Caesar has been with us for the last four years, and he has had a wonderful influence on the youth of our parish, uh, on their lives, on their spiritual formation, um, and he will be greatly missed. Uh, so they're going to be returning to their home in Mexico. So continue to pray for them, uh, pray for him and his family, and continue to pray for our youth group as we move into the fall, we move into a new season um, with the youth. And I'll invite you to stand now, and we will begin Mass.
glorify your name, Lord. We give you thanks, we praise you, O Lord. Holy, holy are you, O Lord. We give you praise, we give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord, fill you. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord, fill this place, O Lord. Fill us with your power, O Lord. Let the dry bones come to life, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Praise to you, Lord Son. Praise to you, Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. So good morning, everyone. So welcome to Parish of St. Mary's. Those who are visiting, as you notice, we have a full, uh, full house here. We have a lot of priests here. I uh, would just like to welcome, of course, we have our, our very own Father Roger, uh, General Superior of the Companions of the Cross. We have Father Terry, uh, part of the formation team of the Companions of the Cross, and also Father Simon Lobo, who's from this parish, but now the pastor of St. Benedict. And last but not the least, this is our very own Deacon Daniel Ramos, who just got ordained last August 13. Okay, so, so welcome. So it's good to come here as one family invoking the Holy Spirit. We just sang this beautiful song of these dry bones coming to life when they receive the bread of life. And that's what we're asking here. There's still so many dead parts in our life. And we wa want the Holy Spirit to fill us so that we will come to life. And when each and every one of us will come to life, the vision of Father Bob will come to life also, which is a church coming explosively alive. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the ancients and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
so long. Gloria Kadasha la la la. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Come, Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. Fill this place. Give us your love, your power, O oh Lord. We give you praise, we give you thanks. Holy, holy are you, O oh Lord. Praise you, O Lord. Praise you, Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glorify your holy name. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, perform your tasks with humility. Then you will be loved by those whom God accepts. The greater you are, the more you must humble yourself. So you will find favor in the sight of the Lord. Many are lofty and renowned, but to the humble, the Lord reveals his secrets. For great is the might of the Lord, but by the humble he is glorified. When calamity befalls someone proud, there is no healing, for an evil plant has taken root in them. The mind of the intelligent appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the desire of the wise. The word of the Lord. Be joyful, let them exalt before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. His name is the Lord, be exalted before him. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided. 
provided for the needy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, the lawyers and Pharisees were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus said also to the Pharisee who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors. 
in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. So this week, I just got back from uh, an adventure. Uh, I did this uh, Petit Train du Nord, a French for the little train of the north. How many of you have done this in Quebec? A portion of it or the whole thing? Okay, good. So I did this with my good friend, uh, Peter. Uh, so this is a 234-kilometer uh, bike ride. So it's, it's, it's an old train tracks in Quebec that was converted to a bike trail. And me and uh, my friend Peter, uh, we were able to do this uh, in three days. So we're biking like uh, average of 80 kilometers uh, uh, a day. And uh, it's just beautiful. If you, if, if you haven't done it, uh, I encourage you to, to go and do it, uh, even just a portion of it. There's beautiful scenery there in Quebec. But after three days, I was like struggling. You know, I, I, I'm not that young anymore, so I was having body aches and pains. And another thing is that I was like struggling also with pride. You know, if you see there in the, in the picture there, every kilometer there's a post. So I purposely took a picture of that under the 50 kilometer post because, you know, it's a milestone for me to be able to do this on my 50th birth year, right? And uh, so, and the thought that I was like coming into my mind was like, see? how physically fit you are, you know? Other people your age won't be able to do this. I was like struggling with, with, with pride. Another thing is, if you remember, Monday and Tuesday, the weather forecast was thunderstorm. So I was like praying, praying, Lord, give us good weather. And after three days, we didn't get wet. And you know what I was like thinking? See? How I'm the favorite of God. I'm so special. <laughs> you see how powerful my prayer is? You know, it, it stopped the rain. <laughs> you, saw, you see, the, 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 my, my ego is, is kind of inflating. An ego, it's an acronym for easing God out. It's easing God out and putting myself in the place of God. And instead of attributing to God the glory, I attribute that glory to myself. That's why I was struggling with, with, uh, with, with, with pride. And there's different manifestations of pride, like wanting to seek the attention of people, uh, wanting to be better than others. Also, um, couldn't handle constructive criticism and also being critical over other people when, when when, when we see the shortcoming and not seeing our shortcoming, okay? And another thing is also, it's not being teachable, thinking that I know everything. I don't need to learn anymore, okay? So how many of you could identify with that? How many of you here struggle with pride? Okay, so for those who did not raise their hands, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> I, I forgot to tell you that those who think that they're already humble is a sign of pride. So we're all in the same boat here. <laughs> okay, so pride, right? Like, and, and, and for me, this is a hard homily to preach because before I preach to you, I must preach to myself. I struggle with this, right? And, 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 but all of us, all of us are called to humility, okay? In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says there, all of you, I include myself in that, Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If God is calling us to be humble, of course He needs to help us. He's giving us all the graces that we need to remain humble. But He only gives the grace to the humble. <laughs> okay? That's why we need, we need 
to, 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 to stay hum, uh, humble so that we will be able to receive the graces that God wants us to have. And pride is insidious, okay? It proceeds in a very subtle and gradual way. And then when we fall to the temptation of pride, we see the harmful effects of that to us and to others, and also to God, right? And, uh, and, and God knows, God knows when we're already being prideful and He knows how to humble us, okay? It says in Luke chapter 14, verse 11, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. After the nine o'clock mass, I went down to the hall, and then there's this 72-year-old lady who's into biking, and he told me, Father, what you did is easy peasy. <laughs> she told me she's doing 100 kilometer with pannier bags and a lot of heels. So I was like really humbled <laughs> by, by, by this parishioner. <laughs> so God knows how to humble us whenever we try to exalt ourselves. And as I've said, we're called to humility and God is giving us the grace. And we know if we're already growing in humility in the three areas of humility. Humility in relationship with God, humility in relationship with others, and humility in relationship with ourselves. I'll start with humility in relationship with God. The very good example of that is St. John the Baptist. He was, he was pre preaching, right? And he was gaining a lot of followers. And many people thought that he is the Messiah. And they asked him, are you the Messiah that we're waiting for? He could easily said, yes, I am, right? I am the Messiah. Come follow me. But no, he did not say that, right? He says in John chapter 1, verse 17, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the tongue of his sandals. You see the humility of St. John the Baptist? He acknowledged that Jesus is more powerful than him. That's why he was able to say in John chapter 3, verse 30, he must increase, I must decrease. One good definition of humility is this, acknowledging that God is God and I am not, right? So many times we want to be God, we want to be in control, we want to be in charge, but we're not God. That's why this is a very beautiful prayer to say, more of you, Lord, and less of me. Okay? Let go. We need to let go of control, especially, you know, uh, when we're facing temptation. Let go of control. Let God, let God fight for us. We can't fight that temptation. Let go of self-reliance, especially when, when we're, we're running our life or planning our future. Let go of control. Let go of self-reliance and let God be in charge. The second is humility in relationship with others. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Do nothing, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Our pride doesn't want that. Our pride wants us to be better than others. That's why when we see others who are better than us, we're resentful. We're envious of them, okay? But in, in, uh, in our gospel today, we see a beautiful example there. Jesus was saying a parable that, that when you go to a banquet, think of others as better than yourself. Let them take the place of seat of honor. And he modeled that. He modeled that to us, right? During the Last Supper, what did he do? He took the form of the slave and washed the feet of the apostles. He considered his apostles as better than himself. You see the humility of Jesus there? And that's what Jesus is asking us to do also. Think of others better than ourselves. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church 2540, it says there, envy often comes from pride. 
the baptized person should train himself to live in humility. It go, it, there's also a question there in that paragraph of the catechism. Would you like to see God glorified in you? The answer to that, then rejoice in your brother's progress and you will immediately give glory to God because his servant could conquer envy by rejoicing in the merits of others. God will be praised. Okay? So if you want God to be praised, let's be happy of the progress of our neighbors. The third is humility in relationship with ourselves. The former president of Starbucks, his name is Howard Behar, okay, he said this, if there was no praise or criticism in the world, then who would you be? I'll repeat that. If there was no praise or criticism in the world, then who would you be? There are times wherein we find our identity in the praises and criticism of people. Whenever we're praised, we feel elated. And when we're criticized, we feel downcast. Right? We're putting our identity on the praises and criticism of people. And John Wooden, American coach and basketball uh, player, he said this, you cannot let praise and criticism define you. It's a weakness to be caught up on either side. Okay? So if we're humble and we know our identity is in, is in being the beloved sons and daughters of God, whether we're being praised or we're being criticized, we're even killed. We're not going to be affected. That's the goal. That's what we're trying to aim for, to arrive at that point. Right? I'm still struggling with that. Right? When, when, whenever people criticize me, I still get affected. Right? And, and, and that's why, you know, here at St. Mary's, we're doing this uh, Encounter School of Ministries. And the first quarter will start this September 6th. And the first quarter talks all about identity. Okay? I really encourage you to come. You know, it's Tuesday uh, from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., Come for the first few uh, weeks, no obligation. If you decide to really join, then the last time to register is on October 11. Okay? But we need to be grounded in our identity as beloved sons and daughters of God. And when we're humble enough, as I've said, we will not be affected whether people praise us or criticize us. We're all called to greatness. I don't know if you believe that. Do you believe that we're all called to greatness? Yes or no? Yes, we're all called to greatness. But greatness comes with humility. In our uh, first reading today, it says there, the greater you are, the more you must humble yourself. So you will find favor in the sight of the Lord. For great is the might of the Lord. But by the humble, He is glorified. Okay? As I've said, God is giving us the graces that we need to, re to be humble. But uh, St. Bernard of Clairvaux used this, used this analogy of a river. You know the river, right? River, the water of the river goes from upstream to downstream. It never goes the other way around. And he said this, the river of grace cannot flow uphill, up the steep cliff of the proud person's heart. Grace comes from top to bottom. So that the way, the, the more that we're humble, the more that we will receive the graces to grow in our humility in relationship with God, others, and ourselves. And when that happens, God will be able to use us for, for His greater glory. And we will achieve so many great things, but we need to remember Humility is the path to greatness. Let's now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. How great is the mercy of the Lord! God's loving kindness is everlasting. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for people everywhere. For Pope Francis and the College of Cardinals gathering this week, that the Holy Spirit will guide them in their discussions, that they may serve the church with humility and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, that they work for justice, peace, and authentic freedom for all citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in the awareness of our own pride and for the desire to grow in humility, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in outreach to the poor and the marginalized, that they may recognize Christ in all whom they serve and be sincere in their care and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all teachers, as they prepare for the new school year, that God will bless them and inspire them with ways to reach all students. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Jan Gilchrist, that God will bring them healing and strength, and that those who have died, especially Deacon Bob Birch and Lorraine Arsenal, aunt of Franz Beer, will now rejoice at the heavenly banquet table. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Viola Henry, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, let your infinite goodness be ours in answer to these prayers, for we make them in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death and summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ascended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For us to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Marcel, our Bishop, Yvonne, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in all of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, word well, that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So Father Roger and Deacon Daniel will be uh, distributing uh, to those who will receive by the hand, and then for those who would like to receive by the tongue, just go to the communion rail.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor, to Christ our Lord. So again, we'd just like to thank uh, uh, Father Terry and uh, uh, Father Simon and also Deacon Daniel for joining us here at St. Mary's, of course, uh, Father Roger. And uh, please pray for us. Uh, we will be doing our community day starting on uh, Tuesday until Friday. Amen? The Lord with you. Bow down for the blessing. Father in heaven, we come before you as beloved sons and daughters. Lord, make, us, make our identity very secure in, in you, O oh Lord. We ask, Lord, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all of us, Lord. Protect us, O oh Lord, from any harm, from any illnesses, O oh Lord. Provide for all our needs and heal us, O oh Lord, from, of body, soul, and, uh, and spirit of uh, any illnesses, O oh Lord. We ask, Lord, for the gift of the grace to grow in humility so that we will be able to do great things for your greater glory. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and that our Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl to the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.